What happens when WWE superstars bring their real-life drama into the ring? From CM Punk's famous pipe bomb to promos that touched on addiction and death, we're about to witness 15 moments where the line between character and person completely disappeared. Which one do you think shocked fans the most? We're about to see some of the biggest names in wrestling history push the boundaries. Guys like The Rock, John Cena, and Bret Hart. They've all had moments where their promos got a little too real. Sometimes it's planned, sometimes it's not. But it always leaves fans wondering, did that really just happen? So, get ready for some jaw-dropping moments. Which promo do you think crossed the line the most? Let's find out. You think you've seen intense promos? Wait until you hear about the time Samoa Joe crashed Jeff Hardy's celebration and turned it into a therapy session. What taboo topic did Joe dare to bring up? And why did it leave fans divided? Samoa Joe is known for his intense mic work, but during a SmackDown episode celebrating Jeff Hardy's 20th WWE anniversary, he took things to a whole new level. Joe crashes the party and launches into a verbal assault on Hardy that leaves everyone stunned. The air in the arena gets thick with tension as Joe starts referencing something deeply personal. What could be so controversial that it would derail an entire storyline? Joe goes for the jugular, bringing up Hardy's real-life struggles with addiction. It's a sensitive topic that hits close to home for both Hardy and many fans. Some viewers appreciate the raw intensity, while others feel Joe has crossed a line by dragging Hardy's personal demons into the spotlight. The fallout from this promo is immediate and intense. Hardy is visibly shaken, and their scheduled match ends in a no contest. But that's just the beginning. The two superstars end up in an all-out brawl outside the ring, their feud escalating to new heights of animosity. Joe's words don't just affect the storyline. They force Hardy to confront his past in a very public way. It's a stark reminder of how thin the line can be between a character and the person behind it in professional wrestling. While Joe's ability to weave real-life issues into his promos is part of what makes him so compelling, this instance shows how that skill can sometimes cut too deep. While Joe pushed boundaries with his words, another wrestler once crossed the line so hard, he created a new persona. Imagine being so fed up with your job that you trash your boss on live TV. Now imagine that rant turning you into a legend. Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's exactly what happened to Steve Austin in ECW. But what made his promo so special? And why did it resonate with fans in a way no one expected? Let's rewind to 1995. Steve Austin is struggling in WCW, stuck in the mid-card despite his obvious talent. He's frustrated, feeling held back by politics and favoritism. Then the ultimate slap in the face, He's fired via a phone call while recovering from an injury, as he was within driving distance of WCW's office in Atlanta at the time. Talk about adding insult to injury. But Austin's not one to take things lying down. He finds a new home in ECW, where Paul Heyman encourages him to speak his truth. And boy, does he ever. In one of the most memorable promos in wrestling history, Austin unleashes his pent-up anger on WCW. He takes aim at Eric Bischoff, Dusty Rhodes, and even Hulk Hogan. Austin doesn't pull any punches, saying, ECW is going to find out firsthand what Steve Austin can do. What a true superstar is supposed to be. It's raw, it's real, and it's exactly what fans have been waiting for. This promo isn't just a rant. It's the birth of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Gone is the polite, technical wrestler. In his place stands a rebellious, no-nonsense badass who's ready to take on the world. Fans eat it up, connecting with Austin's authentic anger and determination. The impact of this promo goes far beyond Austin's career. It sets the stage for the Attitude Era. A time when wrestling gets edgier, more real, and more popular than ever before. All because one frustrated wrestler decided to speak his mind. As wrestling got edgier, so did the rivalries. But for Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, their feud crossed a line that left fans wondering how much of this is real, and at what point does entertainment go too far. The Hart-Michaels rivalry is legendary in WWE history. These two superstars clash both in and out of the ring their personal dislike for each other adding fuel to an already intense fire. As their feud escalated, so did the personal nature of their promos. Fans watched in disbelief as these two wrestling icons traded barbs that felt too real to be scripted. But then, tragedy struck. Bret Hart's brother, Owen, died in a horrific in-ring incident. Suddenly, the world of kayfabe collided with harsh reality. Hart, still reeling from the loss, delivered an emotional promo that left the audience stunned. He spoke about his struggles with retirement, his uncertainty about his future in wrestling, and the pain of losing his brother. This wasn't just another scripted segment. The raw emotion in Hart's voice was undeniable. He wasn't playing a character anymore. He was a grieving brother, laying his heart bare for the world to see. The lines between fiction and reality blurred, leaving fans and fellow wrestlers alike in a state of shock. The impact of this moment rippled through the wrestling world. 
Hart's vulnerability humanized him in a way that scripted promos never could. For Michaels, it added a layer of complexity to their rivalry. How do you continue a feud when your opponent is dealing with such personal pain? This promo serves as a stark reminder of the real people behind the larger-than-life characters we see in the ring. It shows how quickly the world of professional wrestling can be turned upside down by real-life events. Real-life events can shake up the wrestling world, but some superstars know how to use that to their advantage. Enter Shawn Michaels in Montreal, years after the infamous screw job. What could possibly go wrong when you mock an entire city's most painful wrestling memory? The Montreal screw job at Survivor Series 1997 is etched in wrestling history. Shawn Michaels defeats Bret Hart for the WWF Championship in a controversial finish that leaves Hart feeling betrayed by WWE management. It's a moment that haunts Montreal fans for years. Fast forward to Michaels' return to Montreal. The crowd's hatred for him is palpable. Instead of trying to win them over, Michaels leans into it. He starts mocking Bret Hart and the Screwjob incident during his promo. It's a bold move that leaves the audience stunned. The crowd's reaction is intense. They express their disdain for Michaels, but that only fuels him more. He's not just playing a character anymore. He's tapping into real emotions and using them to elevate his performance. It's a masterclass in turning negative energy into compelling content. Michael's mockery of the Montreal screw job doesn't just reignite his feud with Hart. It transforms him into one of WWE's top heels. He proves that blending reality with scripted storylines can create unforgettable moments in wrestling. This promo shows how powerful real-life events can be in shaping wrestling narratives. The Montreal screw job happened years ago, but Michaels keeps it alive in fans' minds. He turns the city's pain into a tool for his character, walking a fine line between entertainment and genuine animosity. While Michaels capitalized on past events, another WWE superstar was busy crafting a character that hit uncomfortably close to home. Triple H's role in The Authority wasn't just about playing the bad guy. It was about power, both scripted and real. How much of Triple H's on-screen persona was just for show, and how much was a reflection of his actual backstage clout? He is known for blurring the lines between fiction and reality in his promos. One of his memorable moments was when he was feuding with Booker T, where he told Booker, people like you don't deserve to be world champion. A promo segment between the two superstars ended up landing in tons of controversy. As Triple H rose to the main event scene, he had more freedom to speak his mind in his promos. He asserted his dominance by telling others that they owed their success to him and that he could easily break them if he wanted to. When he gained power as part of the authority, his promos became even more ruthless. He belittled other wrestlers, claiming they never drew money and implying they would be nowhere without WWE. Triple H's words, whether genuine or not, fed into online discussions about his backstage influence and alleged favoritism. He boasted about stopping others' dreams at WrestleMania and even joked about fans' threats to stop watching WWE if they disagreed with his decisions. Speaking of pushing boundaries, let's talk about the time a wrestling promoter dared his own network to fire him on live TV. Paul Heyman's rant against TNN wasn't just shocking. It exposed the harsh realities of running an independent wrestling promotion in a WWE-dominated world. Paul Heyman is known for his no-holds-barred approach to promos, but this time, he took it to a whole new level. As the mastermind behind ECW, Heyman was desperate to keep his company afloat. When ECW finally landed a spot on TNN, it seemed like a lifeline, but things quickly went south. TNN wasn't giving ECW the support it needed. Despite decent ratings, Heyman's frustration boiled over in an explosive promo that left everyone stunned. He called out TNN on live TV, labeling them disrespectful pigs and mocking their lack of promotion for ECW. Can you imagine the tension in that room? But Heyman didn't stop there. He dared TNN to kick ECW off the air, knowing full well it could be the end of his company. It was a bold move that showcased just how much Heyman was willing to risk for his vision of wrestling. This wasn't just another scripted segment. Heyman's words came from a place of genuine anger and desperation. He was fighting for ECW survival, and he didn't care who he offended in the process. The follow-up from this promo was immediate and intense. It highlighted the David versus Goliath struggle that small promotions face when trying to compete with WWE. Heyman's willingness to speak truth to power, even at the risk of his own career, cemented his reputation as one of wrestling's most fearless voices. While Heyman's rant targeted an entire network, another wrestler was about to set his sights on WWE itself. Picture this. A frustrated superstar sitting cross-legged in the ring, 
about to unleash words so real, so raw, that fans would debate for years whether it was scripted or not. This is the story of CM Punk's pipe bomb. It's June 27th, 2011, and CM Punk is at a crossroads in his WWE career. He's talented, popular with fans, but feeling undervalued and overlooked by management. As he takes a seat on the entrance ramp, microphone in hand, no one expects what's about to happen. Punk starts talking, and it's clear this isn't your typical WWE promo. He's not just in character. He's speaking from the heart. I don't hate you, John, he says to John Cena. I don't even dislike you. I do like you. I like you a hell of a lot more than I like most people in the back. But then he drops the bombshell. I hate this idea that you're the best because you're not. I'm the best. I'm the best in the world. As Punk continues, he touches on real-life issues that have been simmering beneath the surface of WWE for years. He calls out the company's treatment of wrestlers, the politics behind the scenes, and, and even says WWE would be better after Vince McMahon is dead. The crowd is stunned. The wrestlers backstage are watching in disbelief, and fans at home are wondering if they're witnessing something they weren't supposed to see. The aftermath of the pipe bomb is immediate and far-reaching. Punk is suddenly thrust into the main event scene, winning the WWE Championship in his hometown of Chicago. But more importantly, he's opened the door for a new kind of storytelling in WWE. Suddenly, the line between reality and fiction is blurrier than ever before. CM Punk's pipe bomb sent shockwaves through WWE. But he wasn't the only one ready to drop truth bombs. Just two years later, another superstar would grab the mic and change the game forever. This time, it wasn't about shaking up the main event scene. It was about revolutionizing an entire division. The year is 2013, and the WWE women's division is in a state of flux. Often seen as odd, female wrestlers are fighting for respect and recognition. Enter AJ Lee, a spitfire of a performer with a chip on her shoulder and a point to prove. Picture the scene. Tension is thick enough to cut with a knife. As AJ starts to speak, it's clear this isn't your typical promo. She's not just in character. She's channeling years of frustration shared by many female wrestlers. Casting saying, I didn't get here because I was cute or because I came from some famous wrestling family or because I sucked up to the right people. I got here because I'm good. Ouch! She goes on to label them cheap, interchangeable, useless women. The crowd is stunned. And so are the other wrestlers in the ring. This promo, dubbed the Pipe Bombshell, isn't just about AJ venting her frustrations. It's a wake-up call for the entire women's division. It's a turning point that paves the way for the women's revolution in WWE. The impact is immediate and long-lasting. Female wrestlers start getting more ring time, better storylines, and real opportunities to showcase their skills. AJ's words resonate with fans who have been craving more substance in women's wrestling. Even Vince McMahon, the big boss himself, is impressed. He reportedly gives AJ a kiss on the cheek backstage, proud of her performance. Just when you thought the women's wrestling couldn't get more intense, real-life drama enters the ring. Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair's friendship was the stuff of legends. Until it wasn't. What happens when the line between scripted feuds and genuine animosity blurs? Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair were once inseparable. They came up through NXT together, part of the iconic Four Horsewomen. Their signature four-finger salute was a symbol of their unbreakable bond. But in wrestling, even the strongest friendships can crumble under the spotlight. It all goes down during a championship exchange segment. Simple enough, right? Wrong. Charlotte unexpectedly drops her belt. A major no-no in the wrestling world. The tension in the air is thick enough to cut with a knife. Becky's face says it all. This isn't part of the script. Backstage, things get heated. Reports say Becky and Charlotte have to be separated before fists start flying. It's like watching your two best friends get into a fight at a party. Awkward doesn't even begin to cover it. The fallout is immediate. Suddenly, their on-screen rivalry feels a lot more personal. Every jab, every insult carries extra weight. Fans are left wondering, is this still just a storyline, or are we watching a real friendship fall apart? But here's the kicker. Despite all the bad blood, these two pros still deliver in the ring. Their match at Survivor Series 2021 is a masterclass in putting personal feelings aside for the sake of the show. It's a reminder that in wrestling, the line between real and fake is always blurry. Speaking of blurry lines, let's talk about the time WWE's biggest star went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Hollywood icon. John Cena versus The Rock. A rivalry so intense it left fans wondering, is this still just wrestling or are we watching two egos explode on live TV? The build-up to Cena and Rock's WrestleMania match is legendary. Two of the biggest names in wrestling history, 
set to clash in a once-in-a-lifetime event. But as the weeks go by, something changes. Cena's promos get more aggressive, more personal. He's not just selling a match anymore. He's taking shots at The Rock's Hollywood career. Imagine being in the ring, hearing your opponent question your commitment to the business that made you a star. That's exactly what Cena does. He calls The Rock a part-timer, suggesting he's abandoned wrestling for the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Ouch! It's like watching your older brother get called out at the family reunion. But Cena doesn't stop there. In one memorable moment, he mocks The Rock for having promo notes written on his arm. The people's champ is left speechless, and fans are left wondering, did Cena just go off script? The impact of this feud goes beyond just these two superstars. It highlights a changing landscape in wrestling. On one side, you have Cena, the company man who lives and breathes WWE. On the other, The Rock, who's leveraged his wrestling fame into a successful acting career. It's old school versus new school, full-time versus part-time. While some wrestlers carefully toe the line between real and fake, others bulldoze right through it. Remember Scott Steiner? He's about to show us what happens when keeping it real goes very, very wrong. It's February 7th, 2000, and WCW Nitro is live on the air. Scott Steiner, known for his intimidating presence and impressive physique, is about to unleash a tirade that will leave fans and fellow wrestlers stunned. Steiner has been feeling frustrated with the company, and tonight, he's not holding back. As Steiner grabs the mic, the atmosphere in the arena shifts. He starts off by targeting Ric Flair, a wrestling legend and one of WCW's top stars. What comes next is the verbal assault that no one saw coming. Steiner calls Flair a backstabbing, butt-sucking bastard and accuses him of being a poor imitation of Buddy Rogers. The crowd is shocked, but Steiner's just getting started. In a moment of pure audacity, Steiner declares that he'd rather change the channel to watch WWF when Flair is on. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. You can't look away, but you know it's going to end badly. The fallout is immediate. WCW suspends Steiner for two weeks with pay. It's a slap on the wrist considering the severity of his outburst, but it speaks volumes about the chaotic environment in WCW at the time. Wrestlers feel empowered to speak their minds consequences be damned. This moment becomes a defining one for Steiner's career. His willingness to blur the lines between scripted promos and real-life grievances sets him apart. Fans are left wondering, is this the real Scott Steiner or just an amped-up version of his character? Speaking of blurring lines, let's talk about the hot rod. Roddy Piper was known for his sharp tongue, but did you know he once crossed the line so controversial it left the entire wrestling world stunned? It's 2002, and TNA is holding one of its early events. The atmosphere is electric, fans buzzing with excitement, but no one's prepared for what's about to happen. Roddy Piper steps into the ring, microphone in hand. He's always been unpredictable, but tonight, he's about to take it to a whole new level. As he starts talking, something feels different. This isn't your typical Piper promo. He's not just playing a character anymore. He's speaking from the heart. Suddenly, Piper starts addressing Vince Russo, questioning his role in the wrestling industry. The crowd goes silent. You could hear a pin drop. But Piper's not done. In a moment that leaves everyone speechless, he brings up Owen Hart's tragic death. It's like the air has been sucked out of the arena. The reaction is immediate. The Harris twins step in, trying to restore order. Fans are in shock. Wrestlers backstage are watching in disbelief. Did Roddy Piper just go completely off script on live TV? Later, Piper confirms what everyone suspected. His words were unscripted, a raw expression of his true feelings. It's a stark reminder of the risks involved when wrestlers are given free reign on the mic. While Piper's promo was unscripted, sometimes even planned promos can hit too close to home. Just ask Charlotte Flair. In 2015, a single line from Paige during their feud left the wrestling world stunned and asking, did WWE just cross an ethical line? It's a heated rivalry between Paige and Charlotte Flair. The two talented wrestlers are locked in a fierce battle for supremacy in the women's division. Fans are on the edge of their seats, wondering what will happen next. But no one's prepared for the bombshell Paige is about to drop. Picture this. Paige grabs the mic, her eyes blazing with intensity. She starts tearing into Charlotte, but then she goes off script. In a shocking moment, 
Page brings up Charlotte's late brother, Reed Flair, who tragically passed away in 2013. The arena falls silent. You could hear a pin drop. The reaction is immediate and intense. Fans are divided. Some think it's a brilliant move to amp up the drama, while others feel it's a step too far. But it's not just the fans who are upset. Ric Flair, Charlotte's father and a wrestling legend, is fuming. Rick doesn't hold back. He tells reporters, I was very upset about it. I don't think it's a good thing to do anything that's catastrophic like that. It's clear that this promo has struck a deeply personal chord. The fallout from this moment sparks a heated debate in the wrestling world. Is there a line that shouldn't be crossed, even in the name of entertainment? Some argue that using real-life tragedies adds authenticity to storylines. Others say it's disrespectful to the families involved. Just when you think You've seen it all in wrestling promos. Along comes a moment that blurs the line between fiction and reality. How did a seemingly routine segment on Talking Smack become one of the most intense exchanges in recent WWE history? The answer lies in two words. Daniel Bryan. The rivalry between Daniel Bryan and The Miz had been simmering for years. Both wrestlers have vastly different styles and backgrounds, which only adds fuel to their on-screen animosity. But one fateful night on the WWE Network show Talking Smack, their feud reaches a boiling point. Picture this. Brian, known for his technical wrestling skills, criticizes Miz for wrestling too safely. It's a jab that strikes a nerve and Miz isn't about to take it lying down. What happens next is a verbal explosion that leaves everyone stunned. Miz fires back, calling Brian a coward for retiring due to injuries. He doesn't stop there. In a moment of raw emotion, Miz suggests that if Brian truly loved wrestling, he would go back to the bingo halls of the independent circuit. The intensity in Miz's voice is palpable, and you can see the shock on Brian's face. The exchange escalates to the point where Brian walks off the set. It's not just another scripted segment. The emotions feel too real. Fans are left wondering, did we just witness a real argument on live TV? Later, Brian reflects on the promo, admitting that Miz's comments hit a nerve. The remark about returning to the bingo halls makes him question his own choices. It's a rare glimpse into the real person behind the wrestling persona. This heated exchange showcases how real emotions can create compelling wrestling narratives. Fans react strongly, discussing the authenticity of the moment for years to come. The phrase, not a coward, becomes a defining moment in Miz's career, highlighting the power of a well-delivered promo. From CM Punk's pipe bomb to AJ Lee's pipe bomb shell, We've seen how real emotions can create unforgettable moments in wrestling. These unscripted outbursts often blur the line between character and performer, leaving fans wondering what's real and what's not. Remember when Samoa Joe brought up Jeff Hardy's addiction issues? Or when Paul Heyman dared TNN to fire him on live TV? These moments don't just entertain. They shape the entire wrestling landscape. As wrestling continues to evolve, we can't help but wonder, how will future promos push the boundaries? Will we see more real-life drama incorporated into storylines, or will wrestlers find new ways to shock us? And if you think these moments were crazy, wait until you see our next video about WWE superstars who ruin their careers because of one mistake. Trust me, you don't want to miss it.